for a hemodialysis patient, your vascular access is simply an entryway into your bloodstream. It is often called your lifeline because a healthy and functional access is required for your survival. Hi, I'm Dr. Adina Voiculescu, a general and interventional nephrologist at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. If you have kidney failure, one of the main ways to replace your kidneys is dialysis. You and your doctor will decide whether peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis is the right thing for you. For hemodialysis, you must have access to the blood, as the blood has to leave the body to be cleaned and be returned to you. There are three types of access, an AV fistula, an AV graft, or a catheter. AV fistulas are the type of access that we recommend most. These type of accesses last the longest. Think of it as needing to convert your veins into a bigger pipeline. If your own veins are not suited, there's nothing to be worried about. A plastic tube or a graft can be inserted under the skin. Your AV fistulas or grafts are created with surgery and have to be planned ahead of time, as you cannot start your dialysis treatment until weeks to months after your surgery. The surgery is a simple one or two hour procedure you can go home the same day and the recovery time is short. The last option for blood access is a catheter, which is a great option in case of an emergency as it can be used immediately for dialysis. With a catheter, there is no surgery, so there's no recovery time and you can start dialysis immediately. Recommendation number one, protect your access. If you have a catheter, it can get infected and it can clot. In addition to that, it is important to know that it should not get wet. So no showers and no swimming allowed with a catheter. But you can have a sponge bath. For fistulas and grafts, they often feel like a purring cat under your skin. That's a good thing. It means that it's working fine. If it stops buzzing, that could mean that there is a clot and it needs immediate attention. It happens often, don't panic. Your team will help you get it cleared in no time. Remember, your vascular access is a pipeline, so unplugging it or clearing the clots is like cleaning the pipeline. Recommendation number two, diet and fluid intake. When you're on hemodialysis, your body holds on to fluid and you need to limit your fluid intake to 32 ounces a day. But work with your dietitian for your specific needs. Most hemodialysis patients also need to avoid certain foods. Foods high in salt, high in potassium, and high in phosphorus. Protein is essential for dialysis patients, but they are often high in phosphorus. So work with your physician or your dietitian to determine if you need to take a phosphate binder. Recommendation number three, physical activity. Ideally, you should avoid any activities where you can cut or injure your dialysis axis. The best thing you can do is often simple. Find an easy and accessible way to move your body every day. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Adina Vaikulescu. For more videos on kidney health, click here. For dialysis, click here. And don't forget to subscribe.